when we talk about how far Nigeria has progressed, I think it would also be fair to talk about how far we could not progress because of the manner in which we came together. Lugard began by saying, I will form a coalition with a, an ethnic group which will help run the North, and then the North will run Nigeria. He got that pattern from Uganda because the traditional rulership in Uganda meant, required the British to simply govern the people using an old form of formality. When he got to Nigeria, he decided he was going to form this alliance with, I mean, it became for him a matter of an Anglo-Fulani alliance. And in a 1902 memo to the colonial office, he was very specific. If we, if, if, if we cannot make this generation perform as we will wish them to, we will train their children or we will train their children's children. No political party could win a majority. So every decision taken in Nigeria, every arrangement made had to be based on a coalition. And the coalition we set out with was very interesting. The, the North was the hegemonic group. It had a virtual veto over the two certain states. A veto in the sense of, in the sense that in terms of size, it was virtually three times bigger than the two southern regions. And therefore, it, it meant whoever was going to run Nigeria was going to be linking the north and one of the two southern, southern regions. What do you think we can do to have a better Nigeria? And, you know, we don't need to keep worrying about the British. How do we save this country that belongs to all of us? I would want to say that the real issue is that we have not properly confronted the problems that Britain created for Nigeria. And it is because we have not confronted those problems and the answers we have been, we have been, provided, we have been providing are not consensually brought to the level of decision making that we have the problem we have. From the very beginning, the restructuring of Nigeria was meant to keep us in a certain state. Each time we have tried to make that change, to change that structure, something was done that disrupted the process. I, what I started by saying is this, that whenever we try to change things, if Britain did not intervene, the military intervened. And the kind of intervention they have made ensure that the power structure that was, that was placed, that was put in place, is never changed. We still have a veto holder in the Nigerian political system. Yes. Well, you, but wait, I'm that coming. Means, and that veto holder managed to have enough soldiers to keep, to keep a, propo, a propaganda of arms in place that made it impossible for any changes to take place. Even if you had a conference today, there is bound to be a veto holder input that we change it. How to change it has been the central issue of Nigeria. How do you restructure in the face of a veto holder who would always intervene to make sure that you don't get a change? Is it really true to say that, you know, the... Uh... Uh, northern part of the country uh, exercises a veto power over the rest of Nigeria. I can explain it. It has been reduced to a very bare fist issue. You have a president who can say who can say that all the international agencies dealing with Nigeria should move more positive issues to the north. That is to say, Gen uh, General Buhari. The World Bank has confessed it in the open that they are required to move things to the north. The, the structure of government as it exists has been so banalized that nepotism is almost written into the Nigerian constitution in a manner that almost all other uh, state functionaries are obliged to assume that that is the way to run a government. If, if, if that is not if that is not a way of turning the veto holder into an almost divine, into having a divine right 
to make things happen their way. There's no other, other way of explaining it. It just so happens that what was a mere veto holder yesterday has become a divine, a, a divine push. And let me tell you what is more terrible about that divine so there push. There are Southerners who have been exercising veto oh, I will in the course of Nigerian history. I will explain so this. So it's not as if it's no, only no, in the north. No, no, no. I, will, ex have, uh, I will explain this. The, the average educated Nigerian, in order to be shown as a liberal, very uh, freedom-loving, democratic person, is always trying to be nice to the north. There is no reason to be nice to the North. They are our brothers, and we have a right to fight over the issues that we need to change. It is no, it is no longer right to be nice to the North. Because in this particular case, I give you a very, a very good example now. You have a governor who tells you that all the non Fulani, all the non Nigerian Fulanese must be catered for by the Nigerian state, and actually argues it argues against the, the respect for international boundaries, argues against national policies on the grounds that one ethnic group, which just happened to be the ethnic group with which the British worked out an alliance, should permanently remain a freeholder, moving across all boundaries, respecting no laws and things of that nature. If you are talking about, if you are talking about all Nigerians having a right, that is a claim to a divine right that you are not allowed to touch unless you belong to that ethnic fraction in Nigeria. If that ethnic fraction had the means to create a nation, they would have created one by now. Be the truth is that between the Fulani and the Hausa, there is a very badly structured sense of nationality. It, the, 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 way, the way people talk about it, those who know, they will say a pulo is a pulo and a kado is a kado. It means that although they speak the same language, they have not managed to create a sense of nationality. And they have imposed that in every other part of Nigeria and in every Nigerian conference and situation. We just don't need, I mean, we don't, we don't have to be over liberal. Let us confront the issues. When you allow a small minority to control a majority, as I once said on this, on, on, in this station, they can only rule by falsehood and violence. Well, and that is what well, we are having. I give you one good example. The agitation for state creation and for changing the boundaries of the various states began as early as 1904. The Lorin people were already demanding to join the Akit and King in the Western region. It never happened. Do you know that the, the Bagi of Nigeria, the Gwari, they are divided between six different states? and have never been allowed to come together to form a state, whereas they are contiguous. But I'll tell you something. When you don't have a governor, in fact, two governors, Bauchi and, uh, and Kebi, when you now have two governors insisting that an ethnic group that does not even belong to Nigeria should be given special rights in Nigeria, and you find that those who are already in Nigeria, like the Gwari and many other ethnic groups, I will come to that, they are not even allowed to come together as an ethnic group. You will know that the source of the crisis is very strong. Yeah.